Welcome back to Champion News Talk Radio, brought to you by championnews.net. This is a very special show. We have Monsignor Ketchum, um, Pastor John Kirkwood, and Reverend ba Bob Vandenbosch is going to be joining us, so stay with us. During the break, we were talking about freedom of religion, not freedom from religion, separation of church and state, exactly how David Barton said, our, we are to be protected, religion is to be protected. Mm -hmm. let's, ha let's discuss this actually, a little further. Uh, actually, that's not exactly the right idea. Uh, what is to be protected is the freedom of the people to have free speech, and that should include religion and just about anything else you want to put uh, in front of, of our lawmaking people. Uh, and it isn't just religion. It's all different kinds of ideas that, that come along. Uh, what's uh, really changed is that suddenly the, the president, uh, ha you know, this guy has done a lot of stuff without going through Congress or going back to the people. And he gives edicts. Uh, he's got uh, something like 20, um, what, is it, what does he call them, czars? Czars. For his advisors. He's issued over 900 political edicts. Uh, that's seven times more than all of the uh, executive orders have been issued way back to the first Roosevelt. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's, this guy is issuing law uh, out of his own head as he sees it. And it's a very inappropriate for the whole American process. And uh, he suddenly stepped on the toes of the, particularly the Catholic Party, Catholic mm -hmm. organization, Let's make one other thing clear here. Uh, religious organizations are organizations and inevitably become political. I don't care whether they want to be that or not. Uh, the fact that, fact that there was a lot of Irish, I'm half Irish, uh, in Chicago, uh, the Catholic religion became a group that became heavily identified with the Democratic Party. And uh, so they were Democrats. Uh, and uh, they were assiduously courted by the politicians of Chicago. Same thing can happen in other towns with uh, other uh, religions, Christian religions, Islamic, whatever. They are groups, and uh, the po political people uh, want to get uh, adherence to an organized group to vote for them, and that's perfectly okay, uh, and that's above board. But when you got the president issuing edicts uh, that take the force of law, he has overstepped the bounds of uh, the way things will happen, and the Catholic Church has suddenly recognized mm -hmm. this guy has gone cuckoo. And, uh, <laughs> John, go ahead. What uh, were you definitely say? the Catholic Church, because his edict in the uh, in, uh, Health and Human Services edicts and so forth at attack uh, the, the uh, Catholic uh, doctrines on contraception, but also, most more importantly, even uh, the pro-life issue. But it's not just the Catholics, Jack. You remember, this no. is the administration who, no. who went after the Lutherans and tried to tell the Lutherans that they couldn't fire a minister who had an indiscretion. Now this went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court said nine to nothing, you're out of bounds here, you know, to the Obama administration. So it was the Lutherans and now it's the Catholics. This is the most biblically hostile president in American history. And it's not just that he covered the name of Christ when he speaks at Georgetown University. It, it, it is time and time again, the decisions that this administration makes aren't just indifferent to uh, Bible doctrine, Catholics, Christians, it's hostile, open hostility. In the Air Force, they told chaplains that they have to, if they're asked, officiate over same-sex marriages, and they can do it on base. The only restriction to them was that they couldn't end their prayer in Jesus' name. Now, this is America. This isn't Cuba. I'll, I'll let you speak to the Catholic issue. You know what I want to also, I mean, the Judeo-Christian ethic, he's also hostile to Jews and Judaism. Clearly, he's against Israel. Michael, I know yes. you're chomping at the bit, I and mean, I want Monsignor to plug in too, but go ahead. Yeah, I've been chomping at the bit for ever since the first segment. Um, you know, what they did with requiring re religious institutions to provide contraceptive and abortion insurance, you go back to the, the, the Constitution, it says Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of religion or the exercise thereof. And this was in, now it was in Congress, this is something that, it was an edict, another edict of his. But I also want to stay focused on the fact that this isn't anything new. While Obama has taken it, ratcheted up a notch, the family 
and the church has been under attack for decades. And the silent majority, which I believe are Christians, have been silent in the process. And I really believe the reason they've gone after the church and family is because there is no other institutions out there that breed self-reliance and independence than the church and the family. Monsignor. Uh, Mike, uh, your introduction uh, into this discussion of the word family is really prescient uh, and very core to the whole thing is... Uh, uh, you know, you've got a president here that wants to be everything uh, to people and family to be nothing, yeah. uh, whether it's uh, your medical care or your education, and I'll get further into the, the similarities in that. Uh, he wants that to be all from the, from the wonderful father of the land himself uh, instead of uh, settled down uh, between the representatives of the people. But for centuries, our... Families are the ones that, that handled the problems that happened to individuals. And if you, had, if you kept your snoot clean Families with your Families or the churches family, came in to help the poor, but now the government wants to step in. Now, Monsignor, how is, what's the position the Catholic Church is taking on this HHS mandate, the Health and Human Services mandate? Well, we certainly see it as a violation of our religious freedom and you know, to require religious institutions and, you know, to provide uh, the insurance for abortifacients and other contraceptives, uh, it's totally absurd, and we're adamantly against that. In fact, I think Catholics do not understand um, the magnitude of what this will impact our church and our faith if the Obama administration remains in office. How I, just want to, I just want to share with you the words of the Incidentally, bishop. Incidentally, you are, em are certainly empowered, and nobody should take away your right as a religious person to speak about a political matter. It is your absolute yeah. duty to speak out, and anybody to say that well, we'll says that you can't talk because you're a religious manner is just plain nuts and doesn't uh, understand Absolutely. Your, your faith the process. Should touch, your faith should touch every aspect of your life, including when you walk in the voting booth. Well, yeah. let's but hear I, I, I want to share with you the words of Bishop Daniel Jenke, who's the bishop mm -hmm. of the Diocese of Peoria, my own diocese, my own bishop. But he just said last, uh, he said on October 7th, he said, depending on what happens with this election, every Catholic school, uh, every Catholic hospital, and other public ministries sponsored by our faith could ultimately be shut down because the Catholic Church will never cooperate with the intrinsic evil of destroying innocent human life <laughs> in the womb. So Catholics, that's what we're facing. If we allow the Obama administration to remain in office, the bishops will shut down the schools, the hospitals. We already had to have our uh, so, uh, Catholic social services shut down with regards to um, uh, foster care, foster and, care. Adoption. Yeah, foster yes. care and adoption. Yeah. So what, what is what the a Catholic tragedy. Church yeah. doing to reach out to their flock to let them know, to make them you aware know, of this? For a long time, the Catholic Church did not emphasize the right to life issue nearly as much as the evangelical Christians did, who made quite a fight out of it. Uh, I, I was surprised as a Catholic yeah. that I didn't hear more about it from the Catholic Church. C can and I the say evangelicals something to that, uh, came along yeah. huge. Yeah, can I say something to that, Jack? I think you're, you're right when it comes to the pulpit. Evangelicals will speak about it from the pulpit, but I was talking to Reverend Bob and others. When, when you're in a, a board of a Right to Life movement, um, I'm sometimes the only evangelical in the room, and, and, and Reverend Bob as well. So as far as the movement goes, the Right to Life movement, it really the lay people of the Catholic Church have really been uh, leading the way in that way. But I think you're right in regards to the pulpit that evangelicals could speak out uh, a little stronger to that. This past well, Friday... They, they did for a yeah, long time. But, you know, there's been a change in that, Jack, mm -hmm. um, because now we see the leadership, Bishop Jenke, you mentioned, B Bishop E.W. Jackson, others are, are out there leading, but the evangelical church has grown more silent since we lost some of our stalwarts. Uh, we, we lost yeah. D. James Kennedy, and, and we lost a, a Jerry Falwell, and these guys have been replaced by the prosperity merchants who aren't really interested in tackling these hard issues, and that's why we have to speak out to the pastors around the country and say, you're the watchman on the wall. God calls you to blow the shofar when you see wickedness on the horizon. And it's never been a clearer time in American history that, that we have a war going on with this, in this country and uh, with, with the administration against, against uh, biblical Christianity. Michael. Well, yeah. one, of the, one of the reasons that I believe uh, uh, that they've tried to silence the churches with the IRS mandate 
is because they know the Revolutionary War started in the churches. Yeah, the and I believe Lincoln. the Christians in this land is the silent majority. And if we ever come together and rise up, we can get this nation back on track. Well, I think we need to talk more about how pastors and priests and reverends can reach to their flock biblically and with principles to help form and shape the next generation. We were going to come back after the break.